What's up guys, Noah here, and I'm in the middle of like three plane builds right now, and they're all pretty much on hold at this point. Some of them I'm just waiting to get to another step that's going to require a special tool or something I don't have. Some are just waiting on parts. I actually have a twin engine build that they sent me two mismatched motors, so I had to send those back, and servo extensions, things like that. They're just stuff in the mail. So right now, in this time of limbo and waiting, I thought to myself, why not build another? So I guess I really didn't have to decide either because I was getting almost like two or three comments every single video saying, Noah, build an FT Spitfire. And personally, I don't know exactly what the draw is to the Spitfire. It's an older flight test design, and there's not really anything special to it in my opinion. Um, but of course, I don't have a lot of exp extensive experience with this thing. It actually was one of the very first planes I ever flew in real life. My buddy Kafka had one, and my first time flying it was, of course, buddy boxing just for a few seconds before I crashed it, and that's really what got me hooked on RC aviation. So I guess I can't say that I'm totally new to the game here, but essentially the goal of this, obviously, is going to be building it and then in a further future video we're going to go ahead and compare it completely to the FT Mustang which is of course one of my all-time favorite warbirds um, and we're going to see if this thing's a better beginner plane if that one's a better beginner plane which one has better tendencies which one's better for high speed aerobatics things like that full comparison video coming very soon but of course first things first we have to get it built all right so let's go ahead and get into the electronics for this build First things first, our servos here. These are SG90 servos. They are the Muse brand off of Amazon. Very popular among scratch builders. I've got four of them here, and they're they're pretty darn good for what they are. About two bucks a piece, and they really do get the job done. Moving on to my power system here. As you can see, I've got a ZTW Beetles 30 amp ESC. These are some of my favorite ESCs because they're very reliable, they're inexpensive, um, and they have a lot of good performance to them as well. On the other end of that, we've got our motor here, and this one is going to be a little bit new for me. I'm running this Sunny Sky 1250 kV 2216 motor from their new A line. Uh, and again, it's kind of a new line, so I don't have a lot of experience. We're going to be using this plane as a test bed for this motor, but it should be roughly um, equal to their X series, which I'm kind of moving away from because they have such soft metal motor shafts, so it strips out pretty easily. Uh, things like that, but a pretty standard run of the mill uh, Power Pack C spec motor. And with that, I have a 10 by 7 prop. I'm going to start out with this. I might go up to an 11 inch or might go down to a 9 inch, but this is a pretty safe uh, place to start off with for these Power Pack C builds. Anyway, moving on to my battery here. This is a 2200 milliamp hour 3S. So that's pretty much where you want to stay with these um, for the best flight time, but also the best overall performance and power. Um, so this is a Rhino pack right here, and I've had a few of these for a little bit. And then finally, of course, our receiver. This one is a new, tr I guess, receiver for me. It's the Radio Master R88 receiver. This is an eight channel receiver that's 10 bucks. And of course you guys know I run the Radio Master TX16S. So when they introduced their line of receivers, I went ahead and grabbed like three or four of them. And I'm really excited to give these things a shot. However, of course, I don't have a lot of experience. So this could be a complete garbage dump of a receiver and I wouldn't know. I'm gonna go ahead and put the plane on the line and see if this thing is any good. And I'll make sure to report back to you guys. Anyway, let's go ahead and move on. The final little accessories here, of course, we've got four control rods. We've got 3D printed firewall and uh, control horn parts, as well as, of course, all the other pieces we need. I've just got a large um, shipment of foam in, so I'm really excited to get billing with all of that. And if this thing is a total failure, of course, we're only out that foam board because we can move all this stuff into another uh, plane or something like that. Anyway, that's all I really have to say about this so far. I'm going to go ahead and get to building. We're going to go up to the time lapse, and I'll report back to you guys once this thing is complete.
Alright guys, so as you can see here, I finished up the FT Spitfire. It's the next day. I put about four hours into it total. Three last night to get the most of it done. And then came back this morning just to finish it up. Pretty happy with it altogether. And being one of Flight Test's older designs, it doesn't have a lot of the new techniques and technologies that they've developed on their newer models. Meaning that also is a faster build. You're not so worried about getting all that paper fold over um, for the exposed foam or the extra structural reinforcement on the fuselage. So altogether, I really can't complain too much. It was a pretty uh, seamless build all around. Let's go ahead and talk about the different modifications that I've done to this airframe um, as I have it before we go out and fly it. First things first, of course, I went ahead and glued in my power pod. I do this on all my airplanes. Just it gives a little bit better structural support and it doesn't wear out as easily with the power pod all moving around. Um, it's really worth it in my mind just to get a separate motor and ESC for each plane that I own. They're not too expensive and it usually adds up. Anyway, let's go ahead and talk about these servos next because I did go ahead and use these stock mounting and I'm really happy with these all around. Just how they're on the external um, side of the fuselage so you can uh, obviously adjust them and get at them. Uh, that's something that obviously you don't have on the FT Mustang. It looks a lot cleaner when they're mounted on the inside. However, you just really cannot take them out if you have one that fails or anything like that which is really annoying especially if you're not trying to rebuild this right after you have have some you know crash or some other issue with your servos I also went ahead and mounted my receiver actually in the back part of this fuselage right here which is interesting the radio master receiver is a little bit different than your typical spectrum receiver it doesn't have a uh, bind plug you don't need anything like that it just has a button which is super convenient meaning that I could go ahead and mount it on the inside of the fuselage here and then all I did was make a little pinhole on the side where I can stick a screwdriver in that will directly access the bind button if I need to go ahead and bind this again in the future uh, so I don't need to you know get up in there and try to fit a bind plug into the receiver very convenient unfortunately obviously there's not really a good way of getting back into the fuselage if I need to redo my wiring but I'll go ahead and cut into something or I don't even know that's kind of in the back of my mind at this point other than that it's a relatively stock um, Spitfire here I guess the only notable other thing that I've done is I went ahead and made a little water bottle windshield. It's not looking the best. I kind of just did it in like two minutes. So I might revisit that later or put on the speed canopy, but I don't know. Either way, I think I like how it looks for now. It's going to do for the first few flights, and we'll see if I make any improvements down the road. Other than that, I think the build process was pretty darn easy. Um, like I said, an older build definitely doesn't look the best all the way around it just because, again, they hadn't developed those techniques yet. Um, but that did make it very, very easy to do. And if you guys are looking for a good build as a beginner, this might be a great option for you. Let's go ahead and see how it flies, though, because that's going to be the real determining factor on if you should go out and build this and have it in your arsenal. Let's go ahead and head out to the park. All right guys, so I just pulled up the park. We're flying the Spitfire for the first time. And I got a few other planes in the back that I'm gonna fly after this, but it's a gloomy day, nothing special, but there's no rain and the wind doesn't seem to be too bad. So I guess I really can't complain. I'm looking out at those pink flags out there. You might be able to see uh, where they mark the soccer lines and things like that. Um, I guess it's not too bad. There must be a little bit of a breeze, but we're gonna see how this thing flies. If it flies anything like the Mustang, I'll be really happy with it. Uh, my buddy Kafka told me it's a little bit faster so I'm kind of expecting that but we'll see it's about equivalent in terms of electronic motor setups things like that so I guess we're just gonna have to get my raw thoughts on how this thing flies without further ado here we go all right looks like everything is good to go got my CG set up properly the CG on the plans is right on the spar so that's what I followed for this throttle cuts off winds at my back but I'm not thinking I'm gonna have an issue with this so Okay, so she's up in the air. Elevator's definitely a little snappy. Need some trim, holy cow. Needs some trim, but she flies. Oh no. Eh, I don't know really what I'm feeling on this thing. Definitely wants to go left. All right, there we go. Doesn't fly quite as smooth and predict predictably okay all right we're getting settled in now this elevator is super touchy I should have dialed in a lot more expo than I did like look at how holy cow yeah wow I need some expo on the elevator for sure not necessarily the rate it's more the oh my gosh that is really touchy yeah 
the the surfaces are definitely they're probably almost twice the size at least the elevator and the rudder are um, and the ailerons too as the FD Mustang so you can really whip this thing around wow I mean she flies it's not I mean it's not graceful yet but this is a maiden flight so I can't really comment too much on that after I land definitely gonna make some raid adjustments now with my new newfound knowledge but look just snap loops and rolls and stuff like that definitely feels like I'm getting some either like stall spin action or something like that if you kind of get in a dangerous situation I, I don't know that's probably my CG you can probably favor it one way or another it's rather nose heavy I'd say um, if, if there has to be any sort of um, any sort of kind of favoritism on that that I went for obviously as you should but I mean she flies she does not like the wind does not like the wind which is something I really wasn't expecting this thing isn't all that different from the uh, the Mustang and the Mustang doesn't have a problem with the wind but you can definitely feel it on this larger airplane I mean it's nice not larger than the Mustang but it's a, it's a pretty large airplane um, compared to like minis or other ones with the smaller wingspans Definitely you can use that rudder pretty darn well. The, again, bigger control surface. The Mustang can do flat turns. This thing can do flat turns pretty well. I mean, it gets a little fidgety because you're using some aileron to counter. Definitely not a way I'd personally fly, but not too bad. And this is my very first flight with the Sunny Sky A2216-1250 kV motor. And I must say, not a bad motor for what it is after my little bit of testing so far um, just in these passes I mean feels rock steady um, smooth power delivery on the 10 by 7 prop we'll have to see what flight times like and what the temperatures like when I land but um, it feels like a good motor so far yeah so this definitely could be a good option for an aerobatic uh, plane if you guys are looking for something that can still carry the scale lines of a warbird and also give you that flying experience, but also have a little more throw. Um, I initially, I, so I built three flight test warbirds. I built the P-40, that was, uh, and then I built the Mustang, of course, and then I built this guy now. And I'd say this thing fits right in between the Mustang and the P-40. The P-40 was a little bit slower. Um, this one's definitely faster than the Mustang. Um, Mustang really carries the speed um, nicely well, having good handling. Um, but this thing definitely gives some of those larger control surface feeling. Um, obviously because it has larger control surfaces um, compared to the Mustang. Something that I really um, miss having from the P40 that I scrapped to go to the Mustang, if that makes sense. So overall, very, very good flying airplane now that I've kind of gotten it tr um, trimmed out. But the elevator, really a mood killer if you're trying to do some smooth scale flight at the moment. Make sure you don't need that much and definitely I'm going to throw in like 40% expo. I've got 30% right now, which I'm surprised. It's at 60% rate and 30% um, expo, which is wild that the elevator is still that responsive. And again, my only conclusion is that it's just such a big control surface that that's what's causing it. But all around, this, this Spitfire is a great, fun plane to fly. I am not going to really, I don't really, I mean, obviously, only have a few minutes of flying experience with it so far, so I guess I can't draw too many conclusions. I'm going to continue to get a lot of uh, packs to this thing, probably five or six batteries to this thing, before I release my video comparing it to the FT Mustang, and that will hopefully be completely co conclusive, and I'll be able to tell you which one you should build for each different type of scenario, and we'll do something similar to my um, Vector F22 comparison and the Mustang Mini Mustang comparison where I bring them both out here, fly them both and give you guys my flying thoughts just as they are. But overall Spitfire, I mean flying really good for what it is. Easy build, easy plane. I, I don't, I wouldn't say this is a good first plane. I would say this is definitely your intermediate potentially advanced if you run high rates airplane. So um, don't try to build this as your first plane if you've never built before. I'd stick to something like the FT Simple Cub or in my personal favorite, the FT Simple Scout, as you guys know. Um, but this one is a great option if you're looking to get into Warbirds and you want something um, that has some throw to it. I just cannot get over how touchy that elevator is, but oh well. Don't always get to pick those, pick those things. It's got some got some pep to it. I 
like I said, it's, it's a little bit faster than the Mustang maybe, but not by much. And when you're running on 3S2200, depending on the build weight and all that stuff, you can definitely adjust those. This is just on a relatively similar uh, power pack C setup. They're both really running the same size, same KV motors, but again, different motors that could affect it, of course. Uh, the props the same. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I'll go ahead and cover all that stuff in my full comparison. Um, I don't really want to make too many conclusions, like I said, on that. Well, we're reaching the end of my timer here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and think about bringing it in for a landing. Um, all the snow that was out here yesterday um, just melted. So, yeah, we got to go ahead and consider things carefully because this is a belly lander, of course, and all this stuff with the aeration pellets and things like that is just straight muck. I went ahead and put some packing tape on the bottom of the fuselage, which is obviously going to be to my advantage to keep this paper um, white instead of brown, but we're just going to go ahead and try to see if we can bring it in. And thankfully it doesn't have the scoop like the Mustang does, but just bring it in nice and slow into the wind right at my me. And this is a good test for stall actually. Oh my gosh, that was wild. I kind of aborted that a little too late. It, 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 it definitely drops a wing. And that was one thing that's interesting behind this is David Windestall designed this in such a way with the large under camera wings that you it wouldn't drop a wing as easily but maybe it's just the shape of the wing that doesn't provide as much wing surface area but I'm gonna go ahead and bring it in definitely don't want to be going too slow for too long on this thing it likes its speed and bringing it in just like that just land a little bit farther behind me perfect you can slow it down but again don't keep it there anyway that's gonna wrap it up for that all right guys so that's gonna wrap things up for now my first build thoughts and flight impressions on this airplane overall we're pretty positive i mean it flies a lot like the ft mustang with some differences again i'm gonna have a full comparison video coming out here probably in a week or two um and we're gonna see how they stack up however if you guys really like this plane for aesthetic value I would say go ahead and build it because it, they're, I mean, they're pretty similar airplanes. They both fly like low wing warbirds um, and you can go ahead and accommodate for each one uh, either way you like it, just with some radio settings and the way you set up the CG and your motor, things like that. But again, I'll have that full comparison if you guys are interested in that coming here very soon. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already, please go ahead and click the subscribe button down below. Turn on the notification to be notified every single time I upload. And if you have any questions, make sure to go ahead and comment below. That's it for now. I'll see you guys later.